Black Clover is one of Shonen Jump's newest properties having began in March 2015 and despite the initial pushback against the series from seasoned and older Jump readers, it went from strength to strength and its author Yuki Tabata managed to deliver a compelling story with a cast of lovable characters that connected with fans. With over 200 chapters out, it's no doubt that the series is one of the best in the magazine and embodies the classic shonen so well that it resonates with the readers. I binged the entire series in two nights and whilst I don't recommend that, I have to say that Black Clover is a series that blossoms into something special and if you're willing to give it the time, you'll be able to enjoy the story as well. However, I've already discussed my thoughts on the manga at length and you can find my ramblings of love for the series on Twitter or in my previous video on Black Clover. And as long as I've been a fan of Black Clover, something that a number of you have asked me to do is dissect the anime production behind Black Clover. Studio Period was tasked to handle the adaptation and it's been quite the tumultuous endeavour. With over 75 episodes released so far, it's not hard to say that producing Black Clover has been one of the most difficult tasks for director Tatsuya Yoshihara. So let's take a look at the production history of Black Clover and how it came to be one of the most difficult shows to produce at Studio Period. To fully comprehend how Black Clover came to be, let's wind back to a little known show called Twin Star Exorcists. Twin Star Exorcists ran for 50 episodes and in fact had its own fair share of production woes with a majority of the episodes being outsourced to other studios like Studio Mouse, Studio Drop and Studio Ammo who would all later on go on to contribute to Black Clover but more on that later. To give you an example of the impact of a good environment and a good schedule and what that can do to an animator's output, this is the work of Miso, an animator who was on Twin Star Exorcists and this is his work on Mob Psycho 100 Season 2 when he directed and storyboarded Episode 11. Obviously there's going to be a level of individual growth in any individual animator over time but it's important to contrast how a good production environment can remove the added stress of intense deadlines which can affect an animator's output. One of the most important factors in delivering quality animation is time. You could have all the money and talent associated with a project but if they're fighting deadlines the entire time it's likely that their work will end up being below the standard. Even disregarding money, if you can ensure that the project has proper resources in terms of time and staff, you can deliver animation at a good standard. Though it is really beneficial that you compensate your staff appropriately for their work. Black Clover began airing in October 2017 having inherited the staff from the aforementioned Twin Star Exorcists. Given that it was a long running series, it's imperative to have a good pre-production schedule to allow for staff rotations and animation to be of an acceptable quality. However, following the conclusion of Twin Star Exorcists, the staff only had 5 months of pre-production and when considering the lack of talented staff, this made things extremely difficult for Black Clover. For a long running series, Black Clover didn't have the resources or manpower to deliver great episodes week in week out and the issues would continue to compound within its run. Now some of you might be wondering who in their infinite wisdom decided that Black Clover should go on for over a year even though it didn't have the resources or staff to do so? Well that would be Shueisha. In an interview with Anime News Network, Editor-in-Chief Hiroyuki Nakano discussed some of the factors that go into adapting anime and why some series are long runners while others are seasonal. With regards to Black Clover, he said this, Naruto was a series that we had a lot of hope for 20 years ago. We had a lot of offers from various companies. The editor at the time deliberated on it and eventually chose Period and TV Tokyo because they had an evening time slot that could reach out to kids. Black Clover was a similar case. It was a series along the lines of our classic battle manga. If we picked a late night time slot for it, it would restrict the audience for it. We also wanted it to air for over a year. 
This comment highlights some of the decision making processes for the production of anime and how sometimes it's the TV networks and studios that pitch to Shueisha and they decide based on the proposals they receive. Something that stood out to me in Nakano's comments were regarding the promised Neverland and why it got a late night time slot. It has some frightening themes, also to express those themes they need detailed animation and for that the animation team needs time. Late night anime has a longer schedule so we gave them that. I do find it interesting that the schedule was a factor that was considered for the late night anime broadcast of The Promised Neverland and whilst I do believe that the appropriate decisions were made in that case by having it air seasonally and late night, I don't necessarily believe the notion that a daytime anime would have its audience restricted if it were a nighttime anime. I think that the basis of that premise disregards the impact of online streaming and the global audience as I believe Black Clover would have a similar or greater audience if it was seasonal or even better scheduled. I understand that having a late night long running series is unheard of but to address the need for Shueisha to have it run for more than a year, there's just not enough merit for it to be a long runner coming from an anime perspective. I know TV Tokyo themselves prefer long running series so when that offer comes and it particularly addresses Shueisha's desire for it to be a long running series, they take it. However, the staff didn't have enough time to deliver a compelling adaptation to their own standards and they were fighting for resources within the studio and to complicate things even further continuously relied on outsourcing until the outsourcing studios themselves shut down and went bankrupt. The production issues would extend from the foundation all the way up to the top with director Yoshihara having to resort to asking for in-betweeners on Twitter due to a lack of in-betweeners. He even had to resort to doing his own in-betweens and generally speaking the severe lack of manpower affects the staff as they have to further ration their time to ensure that they can deliver the animation on time and to a satisfactory standard. To further elaborate, a lack of in-between artists is detrimental to the production as it means nobody is coming on board in the future. Since in-betweeners have to train other animators to get better, they form a pipeline to the top which means that the more skilled they become, it increases the talent pool associated with the project. But this severe lack of manpower has even more lethal effects when a key animator finishes their work and it has to go to the animation supervisor slash animation director for corrections. Here's where we enter another major factor on why the schedule for Black Clover is so bad and as a result the animation suffers. For those that don't know, an animation director or animation supervisor has to take the animation from key animators and correct them to ensure the consistency across the episode. This ensures that the anime maintains a uniform look and follows the character designs and stops any mistake from making its way into the episode. Usually under normal circumstances, any episode should have one or two animation directors to correct the key animation received for each episode. Now as you know when it comes to animation, multiple episodes are in production at the same time at different phases so it's important that animation directors can correct and reply to staff with a quick turnaround however this isn't just an issue that's affecting Black Clover alone. The lack of animation directors is quickly becoming one of the worst problems in the entire industry as the continual overproduction of anime across studios and seasons increase. In fact, Shin Itagaki, the director for Berserk 2016-2017 and Ulysses John the Ark and the Alchemist Knight wrote a column on the anime style website detailing how the shortage of animation directors is becoming a bigger problem than even the shortage of key animators and it makes sense. Without animation directors, there's nobody to supervise the work key animators submit and since the animation directors are so highly sought after, this puts immense pressure on the ones who pick up projects to work longer across multiple episodes and even sometimes work uncredited. Itagaki stated that when animation breakdown happens, it's usually not because of the negligence from the production assistants or because the storyboards were finished too late. But because the smaller and mid-sized production company had lost out to a bigger company in the war for animation directors. In other words, the production had no choice but to leave the bad animation as it is. 
This is an industry-wide issue and something that has affected Black Clover from the start. For Black Clover, Itsuko Takeda is the chief animation director, which also entails the role of character designer, so her sheets are the ones that the anime follows. And for anybody following anime, it's quite obvious that Tabata loves introducing new characters and settings, so Takeda has to design every new character introduced in the series. Furthermore, as the chief animation director, it's her role to correct the animation directors so that there's consistency amongst their work. She one of the most prominent staff members on the show, so when there's not enough resources and he's busy making corrections, it can easily delay the schedule by weeks. There's even times when the staff have had good schedules by most anime standards, and yet the biggest bottleneck has been how long it takes animation directors to return the corrected cuts. For example, when we had the unfinished opening 5 airing, it was due to the bad schedules that made it so that getting corrected animation back from the ADs took weeks. With opening 6, it had a good schedule, but Takeda also had to work on every single episode around that time, and she fell ill due to overwork. So that's why it took weeks after the first version to have the second version done and the difference is quite substantial. To further complicate matters, it's important to keep in mind that the animation director isn't the final part of the production process. These delays have a knock-on effect on how quickly the Dolga cleanup sketches, paint and compositing teams have to do their job. And if they don't have enough time, that has a major effect on the work they put out. Not to mention that even a great scene can be ruined if they get rushed doga. Thankfully Yoshihara's episodes have been getting good schedules and that has allowed key animators to deliver great work but even that great schedule is squandered away due to the lack of manpower from animation directors. Now I want to emphasize that this isn't the animation director's fault, this is just the impact of decisions higher up that don't consider the feasibility and repercussions of delivering a long running series when Period is already suffering from a lack of resources. Whilst I've also highlighted how detrimental the lack of animation directors has been in Black Clover's production, I need to highlight that there has been no production desk credited on the anime for 5 months from episode 28 to 49. The production desk is meant to handle the planning of the rotations and staff to make sure that they allocate staff properly for the scheduled content and without a production desk they were running blind for that long of a period of time which is absolutely insane by anybody else's standards. Another knock on effect is that after the animators are already allocated their cuts and complete their work with the massive delays due to the lack of ADs, it's possible that they get requested to do more cuts on an episode under the same or even worse schedules which means they have to do more work than was originally planned which is unhealthy and puts unnecessary levels of stress on the staff. The level of overwork and stress that comes from a lack of resources and continual increases in overproduction across the industry is something that needs to be addressed. It's not that just the animators are suffering which is bad enough, the entire production process is reading and sooner or later there's going to be casualties as there have been in the past and these committees and producers need to get their shit together before it's too late. We're reaching a tipping point with regards to overproduction of anime and this is just one example from one series that highlights how increasingly out of touch the producers are with the production environments and circumstances behind anime that is being consumed on a global scale. This isn't something that's unique to Black Clover and we've seen series fall flat under the burdens and expectations of stakeholders who reap all the rewards from the production of anime and meanwhile the studios are just hired grunt who pump out shows faster than they can make them. The industry is suffering from an increasing amount of money going to the people who have nothing to do with the actual production of the show and I wouldn't be surprised if it all collapses and goes to shit unless there are major changes in how those working on the show are remunerated for their efforts and the entire production process is alleviated of this unnecessary overproduction issue. Now I don't want to end this video on such a gloomy note so I will say this. Black Clover has been a production that has faced incredible challenges right from the start and whilst it's easy to take out of context screenshots or meme on the overall quality of the show, if there's anything I want you to take away from this video it's that the staff are passionate for Black Clover and the material. Whilst the quality of the show itself might have left some fans with a bad impression, 
in spite of all these challenges we received some great episodes and even the controversial episode 63 came from director Yoshihara's ambition to deliver an episode that highlighted his strength as a web generation animator. His acquaintances and friends who contributed to the episode along with the animators he recruited from Twitter showed that he had an endurance and fortitude to deliver an impossible dream that was spurred on by Boruto 65. While some might regard it as rudimentary, it's hard not to root for a team that was essentially abandoned by Perion, both in resources and in-house talent, with the higher ups assuming that Yoshihara's pure connections could carry the series when it clearly could not. Everything he has done on Black Clover is in spite of the circumstances and not because of it, and it's important that we recognize and appreciate the staff for their efforts. And when you hear stories like independent artist Tatsuhiro Ariyoshi's key animation was aided by his mother, you can't help but feel warm inside and want to root for them. Black Clover is an anime that shouldn't exist under the circumstances and like Asta, it's an anime that was made against all the odds. So let's celebrate and uplift rather than criticize and downplay the efforts that brought us this far. So for those of you looking forward to Black Clover, just know that Yoshihara's impossible dream lives on and he's working on another big episode that will be coming out in the next few months. So I really hope you look forward to what Black Clover has in store. As for you guys, I hope this gives you a greater understanding of the things that are happening behind the scenes. I went and took the time to do a lot of research and discussed with some other members in the production the issues that they were facing and that really enlightened me on not just Black Clover but the industry as a whole. I'll leave my references used in this video in the description down below and if you're interested in learning more feel free to check those out. If you have any questions leave a comment down below and if you like this video please share it around and I recommend checking out my Patreon if you're willing to help me produce more content like this. Thanks for all the support and I'll catch you guys next time.